Serato Stems is the tits. It's so awesome. You're probably using this and trying to figure out what's the controller that's right for you. If you don't know what Serato Stems are, then go figure that out. But if you are and you found this video, I tried out three different controllers to find the perfect one to use Serato Stems to be able to mix live um, on the fly using the performance pads. And I'm going to tell you right now, it took me $4,000 and three different controllers to find the right one. I went through the pros and the cons of each one of them. And then at the end of this, I will tell you exactly why I chose the third one for what's perfect for me, for somebody who's trying to prepare to get into the clubs and transition over to CDJs. I'm not really comfortable using them. I'm more of a wedding mobile DJ kind of guy. Uh, but I'm, I've got some club stuff coming up and I want to be ready for CDJs and just bringing a, a, a USB stick and not being unfamiliar with the software. Well, there's a way that you can practice at home. You can use Serato stems. You can prepare your record box music. It's all in one thing. So let's dive into it. Enjoy. All right, let's take a look at this Rain One Professional Motorized DJ Controller for Serato DJ Pro. This thing's awesome. It's about $1,600. It was on sale when I bought it um, during the Christmas season. So I got it for about, I believe it was at $1,400. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff going on. Now, you've got six color effects here compared to four on the Deenan. We'll talk about that in a second. A lot of colors going on, so you can easily see what your performance pads look like. Notice these pad selection pads up here, the, the little ones. They're very small, so when you're trying to decide between hot cues or loops or whatever they are, you know, it's it's really tough to get in there. So let's just take a look and see what's going on here. The thing about this guy is that it's not your normal controller. It's made for turntablists. See, this is a turntable that you will assemble when you get here. These decks are not on the board. You actually put them on there. So you've got the turntables that are motorized and spin. Then you've got a slip pad underneath, and then this black plastic um, mimicking a record. It's even got grooves in there, so you can really feel like you're scratching. This turns underneath you while this is um, while you're working. So if you're a scratcher or you're really working on your turntablism, beat juggling, this is the board for you. This board made me feel so excited to practice because it feels like real turntables. They're spinning as you go. It's not just this color wheel that's spinning on like controllers. This is actually turning underneath you while you scratch and do whatever you need to do. You can make it stop in slip mode so that you can treat it like a controller. You can plug it into a laptop, obviously. But it's sturdy. It's built like a tank. This thing is heavy. It's easy to find a case for it, and it's easy to put together. So these are all the pros that I'm going through. It's got depressible play buttons, meaning when you touch these play buttons right here, they actually click in. They go into the board and then come back out. It's not just like a tap. like They actually depress into the board and then come out. Really, really satisfying. And then it's got solid connectivity. Let's take a look here at the back of it. I want to get in there. Can I get in there? Yeah, there we go. We've got two microphones. We've got an aux in. You've got control for each deck. So if you wanted to put like a player onto deck one and then control it using the turntable, you can do that. Same for deck two. You've got your ground control over here. Now your master is um, going to be here. Also, you've got um, phono uh, out for your master if you want to do that to your board. I do that to my podcasting board instead of the XLRs. And then also your booth out and controls for all of this stuff as well. You've got two USBs for two different computers, but you'll notice here there's no stick. There's no USB stick in here. So if you're like a club DJ looking to get into the CDJs and get you know prepare for your um, for your set where you're going to bring just a um, USB stick to the club, well you can't really do that on this board. This is just from uh, a USB to a computer. And then uh, you've got a little bit of torque control on your motors here. Then when we back out of here, I want to take a look at, on the front end of this, what we've got that's really nice about it. You've got mic control here, and you've got EQ for both, low and high. That is huge. Low and high EQ for both, and huge for this one that the other ones don't have. This controls your aux, too. So when you switch over to that aux input, let's say you've got like a phone or an iPad plugged into this, and you're just running some songs before your set starts or whatever, you can actually um, affect the EQ, pull off some low end if it's rumbling your speakers a little bit, if it's a little bit too loud and you're worried about maxing out your, your speakers, you can pull off some of the low end. Um, you've got your own level here for each microphone. Really awesome. I love that. You can put your decks in reverse or regular over here. And then, of course, you've got your crossfader control if you want to switch it over or if you want to be... Um, you know, normal or goofy, totally up to you. It's up to you guys. So that's all here. 
And then also one more thing we've got is our Q mix and our Q level and our headphone jacks. So pretty much everything that you would want out of this board. So let's talk about the bad, the negative. What's going on here? All right. Well, I'll tell you. First of all, it's heavy as shit. This thing is so heavy. So putting it inside of a case, it's going to be a nightmare to carry around. The thing is really heavy. There's no BPM effects on it. So it's very different from CDJs. We'll talk about that and you'll see in uh, the next one coming up. Usually a CDJ will have a strip right here that has effects that are strictly BPM um, behaving and they are you can put them on either the master on deck one or deck two. These color effects are controlled by these wheels here, these pots, but this is separate. You usually get these and more effects over here. You don't get that on the Rain 1. So it's going to feel a little bit different than CDJs. If you go from this to CDJs at a club, you're going to be like, uh, what, what's going on? This looks like going from a PC to a Mac. It's very different looking. Um, all the same stuff for the most part, except for those BPM effects, but it's very different looking. No USB sticks. Um, in the back, it's not standalone. There's no screen here, so you need some sort of computer to uh, to use it. But you do have two of those outs, so you can have like you know a friend also bring his or her laptop, plug into deck B, and then um, switch over seamlessly or however you want to do it. That's awesome. But the real main por uh, portion of this that I wanted to talk about is right here. It's these performance pads. These things suck. Okay, so let's talk about it. At first, I was like, oh, they're not so bad. They're okay. This side was okay. But look, if we're doing Serato stems, this stuff needs to fire exactly when I tell it to and then, and then never again when I don't. This side was okay. But what, what I'll show you here, first of all, the colors are great. These are way too small and they're hard, they're hard to hit. I mean, I'm just telling you, when you're trying to do stuff quick, they're, they're very small buttons and they're not, there's no plastic cover like on this one. They're just kind of I don't know what the word is for this. They feel they feel just like these, which are like rubberized. And they can trigger very easily. The problem with these performance pads, and this is something that happened over on this deck, on this pad, this set of pads would trigger automatically without me even touching them. So when you're in um, when you're in Serato and you're doing stems, if you have all four of these on then all of the song will be playing. But if you click on this guy, then it will take out the vocals and then this will become yellow. Well, without even touching it, then this would fire back to blue and the vocals would come back. I mean, excuse me? Or I would hit this, it would take the vocals out and then the vocals would just come back in immediately. I would only hit, I'd only hit it once, take the vocals out, and then they would just come back in. That is unacceptable. I cannot have it. These pads fire on the softest touch. I'm talking you could breathe on this pad and it will just fire and click it over to this one and take the vocals out and then they'll just randomly come back in without you touching anything. Like, that's it. That, that right there, I was like, well, okay, can't have this. And I sat there testing it and it just constantly was inaccurate. So if the pads are not going to be accurate and they're so, so, so sensitive where you literally breathe on them, if you put your finger, just touch it on the top of it without pressing in, it's going to fire that pad. Sometimes I would press a pad. Let's go here real quick. Sometimes I would press this pad and it would fire this pad because it looks like underneath they're just so closely, I don't know, wired together or however it works, but you would hit one pad and it would fire the other ones saying you wanted to take out the drums and it would take out the vocals. Like you just can't have it. This is an unusable board with Serato stems. And that's it, maybe this was a faulty board, but the one I had, completely unusable. So I had to take it back. All right. It sucks too because I was really enjoying the spinning DJ, um, the spinning decks underneath and feeling like I was going to get some real um, scratch feel. Made me excited to practice. So I was really disappointed when this happened. So I ended up trading this in and got a Deenan DJ SC Live 4. Now this is a little bit less for 1200 but I do not. Well, let's go over it. There are pros and cons to this. If you're going to spend that much money, I'm just going to say off the bat, don't buy this thing. It's, it's, it's not trash, but it's going to feel like it. And for the same price, there's a lot better out there. But there are some good things about this. First of all, these are speakers. This is a speaker. That's a speaker on the board, which I thought was going to be super lame. But honestly, for just practicing in my, in my room, 
Like this is awesome. You don't have to turn on headphones or anything. You can just rock out, plug in, uh, I name plug in. You just turn it on and start rolling. There is some really cool stuff to this. So let's just talk about it. The pros. The speaker on board is great for practicing. That is it though. You're not going to be able to use these for, you know, like a booth type situation. I mean, you know, they're speakers, but if you turn it up past like 40%, you start feeling the rumble in the actual controller, like even when your fingers are down here. So that's just, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, what's great about it is it's super light. This thing is so light. So carrying it around is going to be super easy. No problem at all. It's the only four channel, one, two, three, four standalone that exists right now. So you don't need a laptop or anything to control this. You can just come in and start rocking out. You can load songs through Serato on a USB stick that you have. Um, you can even stream music right to the board, which is really cool. There's options for like Amazon Music. Um, you can connect your beat port up here. So if you have Wi-Fi, you literally can just start pulling up songs, loading them onto the decks and ripping it. It's a lot of fun to do that. Um, now, here's the BPM effects that I was telling you about in the previous build for the Rain 1. You see this strip right here? This whole strip is dedicated to BPM effects. There's all these types of effects. Let's see, where are they? They don't even say them on here. That's stupid. So you've got to go look either on the screen and pull up some sort of effects so you can see what you're using or put it in controller mode, plug a laptop into it, and then look at your effects through there. But it's silly that you can't see them on this actual strip. If you're using CDJs or really anything else, it's what you're going to be able to do. But these, if you put, you know, you say, I want it to affect track three, and I want it to be at this BPM, and you can set the parameter of how much you want. And then when you toggle this button, it'll blink, and it'll affect that track until you hit that off again. So... It's, a, it's just another way. Now, you do have four color effects over here that you can control using the sweep effects knob on each channel. Just pick which one you want. But you only get four compared to the Rain 1 that had six. But the Rain 1 did not have these extra effects over here. So it's just kind of like give or take. All right, so we're getting there. Little little good, little bad. Not, not too great. But what else is going on with this? So what are some good things? Um... The colored pads in here, they're, they're colorful, so you can certainly take a look and see what color you're looking for. These buttons are just as small, uh, so it's not easy to hit them when you're going quick. But the other thing, well, we'll, we'll stick to the pros for right now. I do want to say uh, one more thing. The sensor button. Oh, that's right. The sensor button for this guy is really neat. There's a sensor button up here, which as long as you have it in slip mode, there's the slip button right there then what's going to happen is slip mode is going to keep, you know, you could press your hand on this and stop the song, but when you let it go, it's going to pretend as if the song was always running and it's going to pick it back up right where the song would have been if you didn't press pause, if it had continued to run. So pressing down on the turntable will not stop the song and then letting go start it from where you stopped it. When you let go, it's going to start it from wherever it's been continuously running in the background. What's cool about that is when you hit the sensor button, it's going to put the decks in reverse. So it's going to sound like you're spinning them in reverse. And then if it's in slip mode, when you let go, it's just going to pick up back right where the song is in real time. The reason you use that is for curse words. If you know a curse word's coming up, you just make sure it's in slip. Hit that sensor button and hold it during the curse word. It's going to go. And then, you know, as soon as the curse word's over, it's going to go right back to the song. And it's just a way to censor any kind of uh, bad words or anything that's coming up that you want to take out. Really cool option there. Love that. All right, so let's get into the negatives. What's so not so great about this? Well, connectivity. First of all, on the front end, you'll see there's just the headphone jacks. That's it. Okay, eh, no big deal. But what about on the back end? You'll see there's a lot less here than on the Rain 1, for example. Now, but it's a little different too. So, okay, you've got two microphones, but only one of them is going to be XLR, and then one of them is just going to be a trash mic that you're not going to want to use with some quarter-inch mic. That's crap. You can switch this over and turn it into aux mode, so you can play, you know, plug in a, 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 I don't know, an iPod or an i. You plug in an external source of music. What year are we in? My God, an iPod. Um, but then you've got two main outs here and um, audio, a, a phono main out, just like in the last one, and then booth as well. But the booth you'll see is quarter inch and not XLR like it was in the Rain One. 
As far as memory goes, you've got a uh, SD card stick, two USB sticks, one out for a laptop, and then your power. So you could use USB sticks on this. It is a full standalone, but if you want to throw it in controller mode and use your laptop, you can just take a, a cable, put it to your laptop, and you are good to go. So what are the cons? Well, it's unusable. Here's why. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's only got one XLR mic, first of all. On here is your mic control. So this is where you will control your microphones. There's no EQ for that. So that absolutely sucks. The fact that I can't take any low end in or boost my low end or put some high crisp um, sounds on, the, on my microphone, make sure that I sound crispy and clean. That You just can't do any of that. So that's really frustrating to me. And right there, I was just like, oh, pff, can't use that. Not using a microphone then. All right, fine. Well, it's hard to find a case. That's an exact case for this. That's another thing that kind of sucks about this product. Um, you, there are cases for it, but they're all kind of like makeshift. They're not made specific. You're not going to find like a, this is a Dean and SC Live 4 case made for you, a flight case that you can throw around and put in, uh, you know, check it in a, in a it's just hard to find. Uh, I found that when I was kind of looking around for stuff. Way less connectivity to other devices, but you do have streaming right to your own board and the speakers right there. So that is something. But what made me end up taking this back, because again, I'm looking for the perfect controller for using Serato stems and also preparing music to allow me to feel comfortable when I go to use CDJs where I can't use Serato. Well, here's what sucks about this board. These pads are trash. They're trash. I'm going to tell you right now, you have, they're the exact opposite of the rain one. You have to, you can put your finger on this. You could lean your finger on this. You could lean a Coke on this, but as long as you don't press down on the can of Coke, it's not going to do anything to these buttons. So was, at first I was like, oh, all right, well, it's really hard for them to fire. That's actually good so that they will never misfire on accident, which is true. But I'm going to tell you right now, having to press down so hard on each one of these to actually feel the click come in to activate it, you're gonna, I'm telling you right now, you're going to miss cues. There's no way that you can do this stuff when you're really getting into it and firing really quickly. It's just it's so hard to get them to fire um, quickly when you're trying to do stuff in real time. They're not going to be usable for you. They, if you're only touching them like once or twice a song, then great. It feels like an actual click that you need to, to press to make these things fire. But I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're trying to do this with Serato stems and you're pressing it more than even, even once or twice a song, like you have to do it in a perfect spot and maybe even quickly and get back and forth between different types of pad um, sections, it's just a nightmare to work with. So I tried this for about a day and I tried to get used to it and I was like, yep, this thing's trash. All right. For $1,200, it's not trash. If this was like a $800, $600 controller, I'd be like, yeah. Okay, all right, I guess it can compare. But no, absolutely not. For $1,300, there's absolutely no way I would want to use this board ever, especially if I'm going to use Serato stems. So that leads us to then what I ended up going with. What is the perfect controller, in my opinion, for using Serato stems and also for preparing yourself for becoming a club DJ so that when you get in front of CDJs, you are not, completely lost. Well, here you go. This is the Pioneer XDJ RX3. It's about a year old. And this thing is everything that I need. Now, it's got the colorful pads that are going to be easy to distinguish what you're looking at and what you need really quick at a, at a, you know, at a glance. It's got the artwork of the uh, song on each one of the turntables. That's cool. All the good stuff. So here, let's just go through the pros and the cons of this, and then I'll tell you why it's absolutely the one that I went with and why you should too if you're going to be in any kind of situation like I am. All right, so pros. It's a standalone mixer with a massive touchscreen. This thing's huge. It's like the size of an iPad. All right, now it runs Serato, and it runs Rekordbox. Meaning when you just turn this thing on, it's in record box. Like you can just throw in a USB stick if you've created some stuff on record box and go right ahead and just start rolling. If you don't know what record box is, that is the software that is used for CDJs, which is the standard in clubs. So if you're going to go into clubs and you don't have your music on record box, it might work on the turntables, but it's going to be a crapshoot and you're not going to have any hot cues. You're not going to have any of your, your information that comes along with like the metadata that comes along with your music that you've prepared. 
So you need to have your music prepared on Rekordbox, exported to a USB stick, and then you show up to the club with literally just a USB stick, ideally two, just in case one doesn't work. But this one's going to give you uh, a standalone mixer so you can practice doing that at home, but then you can also plug it into a computer, put it in Serato, and easily switch between sources so that you go into your computer mode. And now I've got my stems, I can create mixes, I can do whatever I want in my studio, but then transfer that over to Rekordbox, put it on a USB, practice using that on a USB, not with stems, but the recorded version that I used using this record button right here. So I can literally plug in my computer, record a mix using stems, do this awesome mashup using this record function to a USB stick, and then I can bring that back into my laptop, put it into Rekordbox, have it available as a mix that I've made, and bring it to the club. Now at the club, I'm not going to be able to use these performance pads on um, Rekordbox because that's only Serato is the one that has DJ um, Serato stems. But I can at least make the mix, and then instead of live mixing it in the club, I can at least play that mix um, through the CDJs in the club and wow everybody there. Now. The other cool things about this, it's easy to find a case for this. You can find, I mean, I found it in two seconds, ordered it, and it was done, um, specifically for the XDJ, the XDJ RX3. Awesome. Love this case. Um, it's sturdy. I enjoy the art on the jog wheels, kind of just a nice little touch. Um, there's multiple views and options on the touchscreen. I'm not going to go through all this. There's tons of videos out there on why and what to do with this touchscreen, why it's great for you. Um, but you can easily switch sources to computer mode when it's when it plugs in so that it mimics. This will mimic your computer screen, which is so neat. You can actually, so so preparing for, if you've never gone uh, in a club and you're using CDJs uh, in the club, but you've never really used CDJs before and you want to kind of like get prepared, you don't want to show up to the club and start playing on a, a piece of equipment you've never even like seen before using software you've never used before. That doesn't make any sense. What you can do is get used to using this search wheel. When Even when it's plugged into your computer, it looks like Serato, so it's a comfortable vibe you're used to seeing, but then this screen is gonna kinda get, it's gonna mimic that. So you can get used to searching for songs on the screen here, loading them onto the deck here, not ever touching your laptop and getting used to that. So it's just slowly getting you more and more used to uh, what it feels like to be on a standalone device and using CDJs. And you can prepare all your music in Rekordbox, bring it back in here, take your laptop out, and really practice what it's going to feel like at the club. You've got all of your beat effects right here, your BPM effects. In fact, let's get that right here. Look at that, and it tells you all the different effects that you can apply to either deck A, deck B, the microphone, the aux channel, or the master. You can just apply this to the entire thing. You've got delay, echo, all this stuff, and you've got your six color effects applied using, just press that, and then you've got these two wheels to apply that to each channel. So you've got six color effects, like a thousand different BPM effects. You've got all the good stuff. You've even got a sensor button over here. But the reason I wanted to get this, because not only can I prepare my sets using Rekordbox and Serato, both at the same time, well, not at the same time, but both whenever I need them, these pads fire perfectly absolutely whenever you want them to fire. They don't fire when you don't need to. They fire when you need them to, and they don't just do anything you don't want them to. So this is a completely reliable set of performance pads, and I'm telling you right now, they kick ass. So I will leave a link. The next one that comes up after this video, I want you to take a look, a look at a live mix that I did putting together Call On Me by Eric Prides and Your Love Is My Drug by Kesha, using Serato stems and the XDJ RX3. This is by far the controller that you want to get for just a few hundred bucks extra. I forget how much this guy is. It's not that much more. I think it's about 2000 Yep, $20.99. You might even find it on sale right now. So spend the extra couple hundred bucks. You will appreciate it. The cons of this are simply that it's too heavy. This thing is heavy as fuck. <laughs> it's so heavy, but you know what? I'll take that. The only other thing that I wouldn't, um, the only other thing that I would like on this is EQ for the aux channel in the back. There's no specific EQ for that, even though there is EQ for the microphones, which I love. Oh, come on. How do I get in there? There it is. Microphones got low and high on, um, and you can do that for each mic. So that is fantastic. I do think there is a way, however, to make this deck 
for this deck, instead of reading deck one, you can change it over to Phono. So if you plug into the back of the board into the Phono line, I believe you can have that controlled through the turntables, in which case, if that was what was happening, well, then you'd be able to control the EQ of the aux. You just turn it into phono mode, and then you do the EQ right there. If that's the case, then, man, I haven't gotten to that, that far in this thing. But, boy, if that's the case, this thing's the way to go. I'm telling you right now, it's the only one for me, and I hope it works for you. It's the XDJ RX3 from Pioneer DJ. That's it. It's the XDJ RX3 from Pioneer. That's the one. If you want to practice what you're working on to get into the clubs, organize your music, start getting familiar with using standalone stuff and not having that computer in front of you, that's the one. You can start practicing, but then if you want to really work on your live mixes using Serato stems, you can bring this to your events. You can bring this to the club if you wanted to. Just let them know ahead of time. You don't want to be, you know pegged as that DJ that's hard to work with and can't use CDJs and has to mess up everybody's gigs, always let them know ahead of time if you're planning on bringing something else or, or ask them if that's okay. But this is the perfect piece of equipment for you to prepare your sets for the clubs to be able to practice um, your live mixes for outside of the clubs and then also uh, record your live mixes so that you can play them in the clubs even when you're not able to use Serato stems on something like a CDJ. It's perfect. I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, please like and subscribe. You know how that helps for the channel. I'm trying to blow this shit up. So thank you for helping me do that. I'm having fun making these and I, can, I plan on continuing to do so. So thanks for the support. Get out there. Start practicing. Keep practicing. Go get yourself some gigs and have fun.